So this video is on polymers. So the aims of this video are to be able to draw the repeating units of addition polymers and mon from monomer structures and vice versa, to, so to go from um, the addition polymer and work out what the monomer structure is, understand what condensation polymerization is um, compared to addition polymerization, draw the condensation polymer formed of the polymerization of dicarboxylic acids, that's a carboxylic acid with two ends that are carboxylic acids, um, and diols, that's an alcohol with two alcohol groups on it, Dicarboxylic acids and amines, diamines, sorry, and that, those are amine molecules with two amine groups on them, and between amino acids, so amino acids have a carboxylic acid group and an amine group, so they can react with each other, if you like. And then finally, to know the differences in biodegradability of addition polymers and condensation polymers and understand the difference between them. Here's an example of a typical question where you have to draw the repeating unit of an addition polymer. So it says here, draw the displayed formula of the repeating unit of polychloroethene. So you've got to realise that to name polymers, you basically just take the monomer's name and put poly in front of it. So the first step here is to work out what chloroethene is. And you should all be able to work that out now. Um, so it's chloroethene is just an ethene molecule, but one of the bonds has a chlorine in it. So... When you draw the repeating unit of, a, of an addition polymer, basically all that happens is this double bond breaks, and then it can uh, bond either side to more of these of these monomers, these units. And so the displayed formula of the repeating unit will just be this. You break the bond, you put Cl, H, H, and H, just draw the groups around the, the carbons again, and then there's the repeating unit, and that will just keep on repeating over and over and over again. To go back again, you just take away these bonds and put a double bond back in, and it's as simple as that. So condensation polymerization is different to addition polymerization, where you're using it's where you're using um, two compounds that can join together multiple times, um, but during that water is created. So, for example, you might be joined together carboxylic acids and alcohols. Now, these carboxylic acids need to be dicarboxylic acids because they need to be able to link multiple times and to do that they have to be able to join both ends and they've got to be diols so here's an example and what will happen is that um, basically the OH will come off here the H will come off here and then the C will attach to this this C will attach to this O and you can see that H2O has been formed here that creates water. So condensation polymerization is basically a polymerization process where water is created in the process. So it's very likely you'd be asked to draw the condensation polymer formed in polymerization of different um, combinations of compounds. So dicarboxylic acids and diols, dicarboxylic acids and diamines, and um, between amino acids, which have amino acids have a carboxylic acid group on one end and a meat and an amine group on the other. So let's just start with a diol and a dicarboxylic acid. So we're going to have the dicarboxylic acid here. We're going to put a B in the middle of it because that B can be anything. It could be a number of different uh, carbon atoms. Um, so chain. It can have branches. It could be anything. And I'm going to add that to a diol, which is going to have an A in the middle, and again that A can be anything. So a diol is a is a is an alcohol with two uh, alcohol groups on it. A dicarboxylic acid is a carboxylic acid with two carboxylic acid groups on it. And this then will join together, and your repeating unit is going to look something like this. So you're going to have your carboxylic acid group. And then attached to your and so on. So this end will then join back up again this end and this will be repeated again here. So that's the sort of thing you're looking at when you join together a dicarboxylic acid and a diol. The next thing we're going to look at is a dicarboxylic acid 
and a diamine. So we'll leave the carboxylic acid up there. Oh, I can't. Okay, I'll delete it all, start again. So we'll have a dicarboxylic acid. I'll draw in green this time. Again, B in the middle. And we'll have a diamine. We'll put A in the middle there. So that's an NH2 group on either side. So here, one of these H's will join up with this OH and water be formed, and the rest of it will polymerize. So we'll start off with the carboxylic acid group. The OH is coming off, remember, so that's going to join up there. B, C, O, O, H. But no OH. You're going to have an N instead. And really, I'm going to draw that. I should be drawing that in blue. That N's going to have an H on it. Only one of those H's has gone off with the OH to form water. Then A, then N, H, and then that joins back up again with this end. So this will then join on this, and that's how you would join up an amine, a diamine with a dicarboxylic acid. And then finally, we're going to show you, just going to show you an amino acid joining up. So an amino acid, you could have a, a polymer of an amino acid with it could just be one amino acid, so we're just going to do that. So it could be this one here. So this end here, that H will go off with that OH, and then they will join up. So what you'll get is a repeating unit where you've got N, H, A, acetyl bond O, N, H, A, acetyl bond O, and so on. So that will then join up again with here. And that is two repeating units, but I just wanted to show you uh, what it would look like. So to understand the differences in biodegradability of the two different types of polymer, you've really got to look at the structure of them. So this is an addition polymer, where it just goes on forever in both directions. And you've got groups on the carbons. And then you can might have a condensation polymer. Let's make it a let's make it a, an amide link there. So this is an amide link in the middle, and an H with a, car, a carbon R group. So the differences in biodegradability is basically based on the differences in polarity. So this here is just basically a long chain alkane, and alkanes are made up of very unreactive um, and strong CC single bonds and CH, or maybe some others, um, single bonds. And so they're generally non-polar, which means they don't react and therefore they take a long, long time to break down. These, however, your condensation polymers are polar because you have a dipole here, but you also, in, in this type anyway, you can have hydrogen bonds which are very polar here. Now the fact it's polar means they're easy to break down and could be biodegradable. And we can break these down, these condensation polymers, by hydrolysis. And that is where you react them with sodium hydroxide. And the sodium hydroxide will react with these condensation polymers because the OH- ions will be attracted to these delta-positive carbon, and in this case nitrogen atoms, in the condensation polymer. So hydrolysis can break down condensation polymers, but cannot break down these addition polymers because these bonds are too strong and it is non-polar, whereas condensation polymers are polar. So here's a past paper question on drawing polymers. Um, so we've got a diamine that's been drawn for us, and that is reacting with benzene 1,4-dicarboxylic acid. So first thing we've got to do is draw this out so we, so we know what we're dealing with. So what that is, is benzene, so a benzene ring, and we've got two carboxylic acid groups, so COOH, on the first and fourth carbon. So if we just number them around the ring, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 1 and 4. So that is going to be reacting with this to form uh, Kevlar. And we need to draw the repeating units of it. So we just need to draw two of them together and show how they repeat. So this OH group is going to fall off with one of these H's to form water. And then this N is going to attach this C um, to form the polymer. 
So what we get are two benzene rings in the chain, and in between we have an N attached to a C, attached to another benzene ring. Then on this side we have a um, acetyl mondo, and on this side we have an N with an H. And so if this joined on to this again, you would form this. And so that's our repeating unit there. And you'll also form water because uh, no H group has come off this C and one H has come off this N. So this question is asking about the biodegradability of Kevlar compared to, uh, which is a condensation polymer, compared to um, addition polymers, which are essentially polyalkenes. The first thing you've got to realise here is that it says state the difference in biodegradability. So it's asking you basically which one is more biodegradable. And for your first mark, all you've got to say is the Kevlar is more biodegradable um, than the polyalkenes. I'm not going to write that in there for this time. Um, and then you've got to say the reason. So... The Kevlar has polar bonds because of the hydrogen bonds it can form, or, um, and also because the carbon is attached to oxygen and the nitrogen is attached to hydrogen, so those are both going to form dipoles. So the Kevlar is polar, and that means it can be, hydro it can be hydrolyzed. And the reason why the addition alkene cannot be hydrolyzed is because the polyalkenes or the addition alkenes are not polar or are non-polar if you like and therefore they will not be hydrolyzed.